Hey guys, thanks for watching Precision Rifle Network. I'm Joel. Today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to properly zero your rifle and true your drop data out to 600 yards. Alright, so as you can see here guys, I've got a target that I've just drawn up a water line on, a horizontal line. This is at 600 yards. Really all I want to know out here is how far above or below that line my drop dad ends up being. So basically I'm going to zero at 100 yards, right? And then I'm going to punch in my, my velocity and all that kind of stuff from the, from the chronograph into my Kestrel. I'm going to get a drop data solution. I'm going to fire at 600 yards and then we're going to measure the offset down here. And then we're going to adjust the Kestrel. I'm going to show you how to do that so that your drop data matches up as close as possible. All right guys, taking our first shots here at 100 yards just to get our initial zero and to run it under the chronograph so that we can get our velocity data to punch into the, uh, the Kestrel. All right guys, well, now that I've shot it under the chronograph, uh, I got a, a velocity of 2835 with this Berger uh, factory ammunition. It's a 140 grain. Got an SD of 8 uh, and an extreme spread of 14 if anybody's interested in that. But I'm going to go ahead and change my data in, uh, in here now. So um, 2835, last time that I shot this ammo, which was last fall, different lot, I had 2814. So now I've got 2835. I'm going to go ahead and get that up there and set that. All right, so now we've got our data. We're gonna go out to 300 yards, just on steel to make sure we're hitting where we need to hit. And then we're gonna go straight out to 600 yards on that paper target. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we center punched that at 300. So now we're gonna go right out to 600 and put a group on that paper. So it's calling for 3.5 mils at 600 yards. I've actually got a decent mirage, so I'm taking a tenth off of that. We're gonna call it 3.4 at 600, almost no wind. So just a slight favor to the right should get me uh, pretty centered up on that paper out there, I'm thinking. All right, I guess we'll see what we'll see. I had uh, quite a bit of mirage out there already this morning, uh, coming up off some crops. And I also had bad mirage coming off of the suppressor. Um, but we're gonna run out and uh, see what we've got at 600 yards for a group. We're gonna measure that offset. We're gonna come back and adjust probably the BC in order to true it inside the Kestrel to get our proper drop data. All right guys, I did want to stop and acknowledge something really quick, and that is the fact that some people say you should not adjust the BC below 600 yards. I tend to agree with that crowd of people. I think below 600 yards you should be truing using muzzle velocity instead of BC. Um, you know, BC changes at certain distances. Um, you, you can't trust the box or the numbers uh, that you get. You kind of got to test these things for yourself. So there's a crowd of people that say 600 yards and beyond is where you should start adjusting BC instead of muzzle velocity in order to true up your data. So I just wanted to throw that out there. It's a constant back and forth in forums and things like that on Sniper's Hide. You can go do some research for yourself, but I am of the group, the camp of people that think it's okay to adjust BC past 600 yards, 600 yards and beyond. So that's why I did it the way that I did it today. All right, guys, so here's what we got. We're at the 600 yard line. And my first shot on paper, I wasn't sure if I hit it uh, because of wind. So I came over here with my wind hold. And as you can see, I got a hit right out here on the edge. All right, so I ended up needing a little bit more wind than I had originally thought. So my first shot on paper was actually right there, all right? So that corresponds wind hold, wind hold. So I'm throwing that one out, right? So then my group ends up being right in here. I'm gonna reposition the camera and get a little bit closer for you. 
All right, so my five shot group here, we're gonna go ahead and measure that up. Looks like it's either gonna be here to here or here to here. So our group here ends up being 4.25 inches at 600. Now what we're looking for down here is not necessarily the group size, which that's an okay group. Obviously I would love it to be uh, about you know three inches or less out here at 600. It is factory ammo. It's the first time I'm running a suppressor on that gun. Had pretty bad mirage. Excuses, excuses, excuses. But you can see the water line. That was where I was aiming as far as my vertical. Now I've got three shots on that, two just a little bit high. I'm not gonna take very much off of this, if at all, maybe a 10th um, off my data. So uh, as far as truing is concerned, we're gonna go back and we're gonna play with the BC just the tiniest little bit to get our drop data to say one tenth less uh, at 600 yards. And then we're gonna, we're gonna lock it in and, and run that as our final dope. So let's get on back and do that. We've got our 2835 feet per second, obviously. We're gonna go down to the BC. Now what I wanna do is you know, my call out there was 3.46. Remember I said I was gonna go 3.5 normally, but I had some pretty bad mirage, so I was gonna come down to 3.4. So I held 3.4, and you saw it was still maybe a tiny bit high. So what I'd like to do is I would like to get this to say, um, you know, 3.4 exactly, and I think I'm probably gonna leave it there. I don't wanna adjust it too far off of that. A tenth isn't much, I could probably come down to 3.3 and a half or something like that, um, and it would be golden. Uh, I just want it to say 3.4. Really all I'm trying to do is to show you how to true this in your Kestrel. So, we're gonna go in here, we're gonna bring this BC up, and we're gonna start with say 3. Or 0.310 as our BC and go back out. We're at 3.43, we still gotta come up a little bit further. So we're gonna come up to say, 3.317 and then we're gonna go back and check our BC there we are so now we've got 3.4 exactly on our Kestrel and that's what we want for our drop data at 600 yards all right we've got our Kestrel uh, matching our drop data now out there at 600 yards we're gonna go ahead and just smack steel 600 500 400 on in to see where we line up on steel and that'll be it for today guys all right guys, so as we go back out um, in distance with our, with our drop data trued in the Kestrel, as you can see here, we're at the 300 yard line, stacking them. All right, and here is the 400 yard line, as you can see, stacking them there too. Wind calls a little off as the further I get out here, I'm realizing, uh, but shots are nice and close and, and pretty well centered up in that target as far as uh, my elevation is concerned. All right guys, here we are at the 500 yard line. You can see bad wind call right there, had it kind of on the edge. And then follow up wind call was, um, it was okay, again, a little low. I think that was me though. I don't think the drop data is off. Um, just dealing with a little mirage and wind, you know, that was after a few shots and that uh, suppressor heating up and I was getting a little bit more mirage. But let's run out to the 600 and see what I ended up on, uh, on steel out there. All right guys, so out here at the 600 yard line, um, after truing the Kestrel BC to match the actual drop data that I was seeing, we, I fired one shot on paper, and you can't really see it, I'll end up zooming in for you, but it's, it's dead nuts on uh, the water line. Okay, so I took one shot there uh, for wind, I took one shot on the steel to figure out my wind, which was here, again, water line centered up, and then I put a three round group on the steel stacking them right there. That's three shots inside of about three inches. So really no complaints there, guys. It's really important to true your drop data at distance, okay? You've gotta to learn to true up your Kestrel to make sure that your drop data is dead nuts on. We wanna take all of those variables out except the wind, right? We want the wind to be the great equalizer. And as you saw today, I kinda of struggled with it. Um, I had probably about a five mile an hour uh, half value wind um, it kept picking up and dying and up here on top of the hill there's actually no wind whereas down by the valley across the lake there's more wind so it's always the great equalizer right at any rate hopefully you learned something from that guys um, hit me up with any questions you have uh, on the facebook link or down in the the description below anyway thanks for watching precision rifle network today stay tuned for more great videos yeah.